Okay, we've got a kind of an interesting question that I'd like to address. What happens to us after we die? Do we have any sense of self or being? And if so, what happens to that? Where does it go? You know, this is a great question. Actually, it's a number of questions. It's a great number of questions, a great group of questions, because it's something that we're always really curious about. We may not ask it, but there's just, for, for all of history that we know of, people have wondered, well, what happens? And there are so many myths and legends and stories. And the reason I use those words, myth and legend and story, is because we don't know. And I've heard, you know, I've been, I've been around this stuff, esoteric stuff, for nearly 40 years in a capacity both as a student and a teacher. And still, after nearly 40 years, I find myself in the capacity of both a student and a teacher. I'm constantly learning. And then I'm trying to share, I'm attempting to share, to communicate with others what I have learned myself. By the time I get it across, I find that it's changed here and I need to get something else across. So this question is not new to me, or this group of questions is not new to me. I've seen these questions before, heard these questions before, and I've had all kinds of answers for them over the years. And I still do. You know, I still have all kinds of answers. It's just that now the pool from which I may draw the answers is much larger. There's a lot more in it. And so it doesn't mean that I have any answer that I can say, this is the answer. But now I have a lot more experience with these kinds of questions. And, and so I'll answer in a lot of different ways, probably. One of the answers is, what happens to us after we die? Well, for a lot of people, this is what happens to them after they die. This is it. So in a sense, a lot of people have the concept, subscribe to the belief, the theory, that we are reincarnated, that is, we get another body. So in that sense, this is what happens to you after you die. So here you are. So you have lived before. So that's one of the answers. And some people stop right there. They, oh, that's great. That's fine. That's, that's good. And a lot of people don't like that answer. They like the traditional Christian answer. Well, or the traditional Muslim, Islamic answer. Uh, well, you die and you go to heaven. And you get all the stuff that you didn't get here. All the good stuff that you didn't get here. All the things that you were deprived of because of mean people, or you deprived yourself of the things of which you deprived yourself because you were sacrificing yourself, giving things up so that you could get them for longer in heaven. It's a kind of a, all right, I admit, it's a kind of a primitive idea. But, you know, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea to, to diminish anyone's religious foundation. Let's call it that, religious foundation. And if that's your religious foundation, okay, then that's your religious foundation. Then have that. And if the idea of reincarnation is your religious foundation, then okay, have that. See, this is not, this fourth way is not a religion. Although in many groups, it becomes a religion. And for us, at times, it becomes a religion. But I like to pull people away from that. I like to move them away from that. And the only reason, the only way to do that is to let them have their own religion. Look, if you want to be, you know, if you want to be a Buddhist, be a Buddhist. If you want to be uh, a Muslim, be a Muslim. If you want to be a Christian, be a Christian. If you want to be a Jew, be a Jew. If you, if, whatever you want to be, go ahead and be that. This, you can still do this work. None of those things, none of those religions bar the path to this work in and of themselves because this is not a religion opposed to any religion. This is simply a way of developing yourself in a harmonious, progressive direction toward what is possible for a man. Not what's possible for mankind, but what's possible for a man, for an individual man. What happens to us after we die? I don't know.
Maybe this is what happens to us after we die. Maybe we do go to some place where everything is peachy keen and we just like float around and walk on streets of gold and, and have a big mansion filled with all kinds of great stuff. And, and maybe we do, you know, maybe we do get field trips on weekends out to the lake of fire where we get to watch all of our enemies suffer and burn and the torment of their suffering, you know, rise continually in smoke. I mean, maybe, maybe that's what happens. I don't know. Personally, I'm not interested in that. Personally, if that's heaven, it seems rather hellish to me to be so full of venom, unforgiveness, and hatred that you could take joy in the suffering of others. That doesn't seem very heavenly to me. I don't know that I would like to live inside of myself knowing that that's the kind of person that I was that took delight in the suffering of others. But, it's, but if that's where you're at, okay, well, then enjoy your heaven. That's, that's all I can say. Because in a sense, what happens to us after we die is pretty much the same thing that happens to us while we're alive, from my perspective. Because what determines what's happening to you is not what's happening to you. It's how you are perceiving it. It's how you are reacting to it. It's what your response to it is. Now, we lose sight of this all the time. We rarely ever know this and understand this. We intellectually grasp it. We can tell other people that's what's wrong with them. But we rarely ever understand it was, what's happening to me is me doing it. I'm doing this. But it is the truth. Whether we understand it or not, it doesn't change anything. Do we have any sense of self or being? After we die, well, do you have any sense of self or being now? Well, not much. Yes, we have a sense of self, we have a sense of being, but it's false. We have this sense of self that isn't true, that isn't real. It can change in an instant. We have no control over it. We all have this sense of self. Well, yes, I'm a wonderful, compassionate, loving, generous person. But then our actions don't support that at all. So we have to make up a whole movie a whole storyline, a whole plot, a whole set of pictures, a whole storyboard, a whole film, a picture after picture, still after still after still, and we run them very quickly so that it looks like a real life. When it's not at all. It's just this imagined life that we would like to have, and how we have how we get it is we have all of these pictures and we just flip through them very quickly. So it looks like we're actually having a life. No, you don't have any sense of self or being just because you die any more than if I walk from here into the kitchen. That doesn't really make me a different person. Oh, yeah, okay, I can do things in the kitchen that I can't do here. No, I can go to the sink. There's not a sink here, so I can't go to the sink here. But there's a sink there, so I can go to the sink, but it doesn't make me a different person because I can go to the sink. And so what happens to that? That self or being, where does it go? Well, you see, the problem is with self or being is it doesn't go anywhere. It's waiting for us to come to it. We're the ones who have gone astray. We are the ones who have gone away from our true self, our true being. We have lost it in this mist, in this smoke that we had to have, that we had to have the smoke to obfuscate the lies that we constantly live, the contradictions of ourselves, the opposites, the sides of ourselves that we are simply not willing to see. The only place we're willing to see them is out there. Well, that's what you do. Well, that's, that's what you're like. Yes, but, but you're the one that's doing it. No, I'm not. You're, you're just seeing that. That's not really what I'm doing. You see that. That's happening in you. That's not me. You know, I, I've talked to people who are convinced that that's the way it is. It's like, okay, there, there's nothing more that I can say. You must come to the realization that you have hidden this whole side of you from yourself. You are unable to see it. And so therefore, what happens to it is it does not exist for you. Now, does it not exist in reality? No, it exists because it's what's acting. Because what you cannot see is what controls you. It's there. In answer to the question, so where does it go? It goes into the darkness of unconsciousness, waiting for us to bring the light of consciousness to it so that we can include it in who we are. <laughs>